Hello, welcome to the eighth lesson of this chapter. We're going to learn a little bit more about vectors today. Some of it's going to be review. Uh, we've switched from chapter six to chapter ten, and they look at it a little bit differently, but it's still a full chapter on vectors. All right, this is the tail, and that's the head of the vector. We've already learned that. Congruent vectors are two vectors that are going in the same direction, where opposite direct vectors are vectors going that are the same exact uh, magnitude, but going in the opposite direction. A position vector it is a vector where we have something i plus yj. This is a new word. We've seen it written, we've called it before, written in terms of its components. Um, but a, posi a position vector starts at the origin and ends at the other point x, y. So let's say if I do vector 3i plus 4j, that means we go 3 to the right and 4 up. And it ends here at the point 3, 4. That's a position vector starting at the origin. All right, so now we're going to draw some vectors. We have A and B. And if I wanted to draw A plus B, we learned about this in the previous chapter. We just take A, and then we take B, and we put it at the end of A. And A plus B is the vector from the beginning of A to the end of B. So A plus B is this dotted vector. All right. Now if I wanted to do 2A, I take an A, and then I take another A and put it at the end of A. It's kind of like this is the same as saying A plus A. And this right here is 2A, because we could go from the beginning to the end, but it's all along the line, so that works out. Now negative B, what I do is I take this vector, and I just have to turn it around. Instead of going in this direction, I need to flip it 180 degrees. Let's line it up just so we know it's in the same direction and the same exact length. So this one right here is going to be my negative b. Now a minus b, what I do is I take a and b, and this is a plus b. a minus b would be if it goes in the opposite direction. So b is going there. So I can put it in the, on the opposite side. So a minus b is going to be from the beginning of the a to the end of negative b. Right there. I should move this down so it's easier to see. But this is going to be a, and this is going to be negative b. All right. So now you take a second and try to draw these the best you can on your paper. When you're ready, start back, the, start the video again. All right, a plus b, we take a, we take b. a plus b is the vector starting at the beginning of the a, going to the end of b. So that's this vector there. Vec oh, these ones aren't infinitely cloned. Oops. Let's do this just so I can keep these things going. So negative 2b. If I had 2b, it would look like this. So negative 2b starts here and goes in the opposite direction. So this is negative 2b. Negative a, take a, go in the opposite direction. Now get rid of our a. And so this right here is negative a. Now if I have a minus 2b, so here's my a, 2b would look like this. So if I just put them on the opposite side, like so, 
a minus 2b would be the vector from the beginning of a to the end of negative 2b, which would be this vector, the data vector. All right. Now let's uh, go back to writing in terms of our components. This will help us out. A little review. So we have one, two, three, four, five i's. This is 2j. So we can write a as 5i plus 2j. Now write the vector 2a, or draw the vector 2a, and write it as, in terms of its components. Now 2a would be if I took another one of these, and I put it at the end of a. My screen's not even big enough for that just keeps on going. So 2a would be not 5 to the right, but 10 to the right, and 4 up. Notice how that relates to this? It's just double those numbers. 10i, 4j. So if I want to uh, find this, remember if it has absolute value signs, that means it's the magnitude. So that would be 5, 2, so 5 squared plus 2 squared, square root that. So that's 25 plus 2, so the square root of 29 is my vector A. That's the length of it. Now if I want to find the angle, I'd say the tangent of that angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So I take the inverse tangent of 2 over 5, which is 21.8 degrees. And we don't have to do anything with arctan because this angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. Alright, now you try this. Angle, well, let's first write angle, our vector b in terms of its components, and then find its magnitude. Alright, it's negative 3i plus 4j. Negative 3i plus 4j and 3, 4, hopefully everybody knows that this magnitude will be 5, and because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so if I want to find this angle right here, I'd have to find the tangent of theta is going to be 4 over negative 3. So this is where I'll need an arctan, which arctan is the inverse tan, plus 180 degrees. We can say 180n. So inverse tan of negative 4 thirds. And now that's going to be negative 53.1. If I add 180 to that, I'll get it to, to where we want it to be, which is 126.86 uh, or 87. So 126.87 degrees. All right. So now we have both of those. We have our A and we have our B. If I want to draw A plus B, that's taking B and putting it at the end of A. And then I'll draw my vector from the beginning of A to the end of B. So that's my A plus B. And now if I want to, uh, ooh, so I drew it. Now let's find out what this is as far as components. I went 2 to the right, so that's 2i. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, j. So 2i plus 6j is going to be A plus B. Now we can also, we already found the components of these. Now we could also get a plus b by adding the i's. 5 minus 3 is 2i. 2 plus 4 is 6j. And that's another way we can get a plus b without having to draw it out on graph paper. All right. So now if I want to find the magnitude of a plus b, uh, what we have to do is take um, 2 squared plus 6 squared and square root that. 
So uh, that's going to be 4 plus 36, which is 40. So that would be root 4, root 10, or 2 root 10. So this is going to be 2 root 10. Now, if I take the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, is that going to be the same thing as magnitude of A plus B? Let's check it out. Uh, we found the magnitude of A already was the square root of 29. The magnitude of B is 5. So most people could probably look at this and see that these are not equivalent. But let's actually find out what the decimal is supposed to be. So 2 root 10 is 6.324. Five or six. Over here, root twenty-nine plus five is ten point three eight five. So the magnitude of a plus b is just this distance. The magnitude of a plus the magnitude of b would be this distance plus that distance. Obviously, you can tell that this plus that has to be more than just the shortcut through. All right, how can we find a minus b graphically? Well, a plus b, we put b at the end of a. A minus b, we just have to flip b around. So it could look like this. So I go from the beginning of a to the end of b. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, i, and then negative 2, j. You can also get that by doing 5 minus a negative 3, which would be 8, 2 minus 4, which is negative 2j, if you have the components. Oh, and I already found that algebraically. It's pretty easy. 2i, or no, pretty easy. Whenever I say that, I don't think about it. Make the dumbest mistake. 5 minus negative 3 is 8i. 2 minus 4 is negative 2j. All right. Now, if we do a little algebra with this, uh, if I have a, to find 3a, that's just multiplying each of these by 3. So that would be 15i plus. 6j. 2b, I multiply both those by 2, so this would be negative 6i plus 8j. If I want to find what the vector 3a plus 2b would be is, I just add these up. So this would be 9i plus 14j. All right, so here's vector B. Let's draw, and here's vector A. I don't know why they're in such weird spots. Let's draw 3A and 2B, and then draw 3A plus 2B. So 3A is... If I take this and I infinite clone it, three of those is a lot. Um, there's two. Three would be another one way out there. Now if I put this on at the end, that just makes it a lot. So it would be three out this way and then two up you go from the middle all the way to the end. And as these get bigger, you can see that it's pretty difficult to do on a graph. That's why we're going to need to rely on our algebra and not only our graphs. All right. Now, there's multiple, multiple, multiple ways to find A minus B. Uh, we could take, uh, let's infinite clone these. If they are already out like this, we can take A 
this is A plus B from here to there. But A minus B would be as if I put these head to head. And then I went from one side to the other. Okay, this is A, this is B. Now if we kept this parallelogram going, right, we could have it look like this. And I could make another parallelogram on top that is congruent to that. Now, uh, if I draw that diagonal, these two diagonals are going to be congruent. Oops, I accidentally drew a vector in there. And so uh, A minus B in this section here, it's kind of hard to see with all that stuff in there. I can get by taking A and B and putting them tail to tail and then going from the end of uh, B to the beginning of A. This is B and that's A. This would be A minus B. So you go from the end of B to the end of A so you get A minus B. So two different ways to draw that out. Now, how big are X and Y in this situation? It seems ridiculous uh, at first, but if this is 5 and this is 1, we just have to divide this by 5, and this would be 3 fifths. If the whole thing is 4, X would be 4 fifths. So this would be a right triangle, 4 fifths, 3 fifths, and 1. So that 1 is what we call a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector that has a that's one unit long. To find a unit vector, we take its, the vector components and divide it by the magnitude, just like we did here. The x, the x direction, which is the i, I divided by the magnitude, which is 5. And the y direction, 3, I divided by the magnitude, which is 5. So if we want to find the unit vector for this, uh, we know that the magnitude of this is 5. So the unit vector is going to be 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. We write unit vector with just a u with a little vector symbol on top. Now if I want to find a vector of length 10 in the direction of this, so I want it to be twice as long as it currently is, what I would do is I'd multiply 10 times my unit vector. So 10 times 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j is going to be 6i plus uh, 8j. Now you could also just multiply this by 2, but, uh, but this is really helpful if it, instead I wanted to make it more specific, if I wanted it to be 9 or 27 long. Uh, it's easy to just multiply the unit vector by a certain amount and find the length we need. So let's find the unit vector for this. So first we need to find the magnitude, which is the square root of 25 plus 4, which is 29. So my unit vector is just going to be 5 over root 29i minus 2 over root 29j. We could rationalize these if we want, but it's fine if we just leave them like that. If I want to find a vector of length 7 in that direction, I'd want to find 7 times my unit vector, which would be 7 times 5, which would be 35, over root 29i, 7 times uh, negative 2, which would be negative 14, over root 29j. All right, hopefully that's enough to help you with your homework. Good luck.